All right, welcome back to Resident Evil. In this video, we're going to continue through this uh, shack, which unfortunately is possibly one of my least favorite parts of the entire game. There are only really two parts of the game that I don't like, and unfortunately this is in fact one of them. I just don't think it's very interesting to look at. It's very, very drab, you know? I, I will praise this game for its its really awesome atmosphere and, you know, how the visuals are pretty scary. However, this area I think is very boring and the other area that I dislike, I dislike for the same reason where it's just, it's just hideous to look at. It's just really boring. It's just grays and murky browns and it's just, it's no fun. And it doesn't help that in this area there's a lot of stuff that can poison you, aka giant snakes. And by snakes, I mean spiders. I mean, th this part's cool. I like the, like, bar area of this game. Those spiders are not really a threat. If you get close enough to them, they can spit, like, acid or whatever at you. Because I guess that's something snakes... Why do I keep saying snakes? That's something that spiders do, I guess. Maybe if you live in Australia, that's something that spiders would do. Doesn't seem like a normal thing. But that's really the only time that they're really dangerous, is if you get close to them. You can run around them. They're big enough and dumb enough that you can always just kind of circumvent them. I feel like, actually, now that I'm really thinking about it, you don't even really fight that many zombies in this area. It's mostly animals. Like, animals and insects. Like, to get to this area, we had to go through snakes and dogs, and there's spiders in here, giant spiders. And then there's... You know what? I'm even thinking about it. The snakes. Are they, like... T-virus infected snakes, or are they just normal snakes? I don't think I've ever thought about that before. <laughs> They're probably just straight up normal snakes that are just being dicks. The spiders are obviously like T-virus infected, and the dogs, the Cerberus dogs, are obviously T-virus infected, but those snakes are just dicks for the sake of being dicks. That would be like Resident Evil 2, going through the city, there's a bunch of zombies, and then there's just one guy who's just trying to eat people, because, you know, why not? You got- you didn't have anything better to do? There's a book that I picked up, maybe I'll read some excerpts from it in some downtime in one of these videos, um, that I've been- I've been trying to get a hold of for a while, and it's- definitely worth it if you can find it for cheap. It's uh, the Resident Evil Archives. It is just a big thick book of Resident Evil information. And for someone who, who loves like the lore of Resident Evil as much as I, I do, it's, it's a really good read. It's essentially the Hyrule Historia for Resident Evil. I think it's kind of, it's written kind of from Umbrella's perspective. At least on the cover it says like Umbrella Files or whatever. This was always one of my favorite, quote-unquote, puzzles. As you can see there, there's there's a hole in the ground there, and a box. What you're gonna want to do is cover that hole with the box. Because if not, what's gonna happen is a, a tentacle monster is going to throw its tentacles at you and kind of just try and grope Jill, I suppose. And it does, like, little damage, but... Any damage is bad damage, so just throw that box on there and you are good to go, my friend. The 
this area is um, really dumb because again it's just one of those that is um, just animals in your way and by animals I mean insects because there's just at some point going to be a swarm of bees but it's not necessary to destroy stars what about my family feel that Jill's not quite the brightest bulb in the tree there. We, the audience, heard that pretty clearly, but she's pretty clueless about it. Jill? Barry, I heard someone talking. Oh, you heard. I think age is starting to take its toll. Talking to myself is becoming a bad habit. Talking to yourself? You alright? What's gotten into you? I'm getting you worried, aren't I? But don't, I'm alright. I guess this creepy mansion has gotten to my nerves. Anyway, I think I'll go outside, get some fresh air for a change. Don't worry, I'm just going to get some fresh air. If I'm lucky I'll get to waste some monsters along the way. So yeah, Jill's not not the most bright of characters, at least in this game. But I mean, can you blame her? She's kind of new to stars. She doesn't, I guess, know Barry all that well. But again, we we heard that pretty clearly. Oh shit! I'm literally right now reading the Resident Evil archives, and apparently those snakes are called adders. Let me read the, um, the description. The small venomous snake was infected by the T-virus and began to multiply uncontrollably. It detects prey by sensing body heat and attacks in groups. It thrives near water and prefers damp places. It has reflexes, it has faster reflexes than a typical snake and will jump to bite into humans on sight. While the green-skinned adder will only cause flesh wounds, the red-skinned version releases... Holy shit, it just ends. Wow. It just ends! I assume they were gonna say poison. Wow, that is pretty spooky that it just ends there. Maybe the book isn't that great after all. But, what do you know? Those snakes... A, they had a name, which I never knew. B, they were in fact T-virus infected, which is kind of unnecessary when you really think about it. Snakes are venomous anyway, so why do they have to be zombie snakes? But, hey, who am I to question Umbrella doing, you know, spooky zombie experiments on snakes? I really think one of the biggest missteps in Resident Evil 6 was... Neo Umbrella, like, there was no reason for that. Let Umbrella lie, it's done. With Wesker and, you know, all them, and Oswell Spencer, and all them dead, it, it, there's no reason. They could have made their own thing, but no. That gun I've never used, never ever once have I ever used that gun. I don't usually like this in games when they kind of make you read stuff, so I'm glad that it's optional in Resident Evil, and it's actually interesting, too. Like, this is going back to what I was talking about in the other, uh, one of the other videos where I was kind of bashing alone in the dark. Those games have some of the worst notes. The fact that they have, like, the person reading it to you, too, just makes it a thousand times worse. And if you don't believe me that uh, the original three Alone in the Darks are garbage games, watch um, Retsu Prey um, comment over them. Those videos are great. 
There's a lot of bathtubs in this game that Jill and Chris have to interact with. Yeah, this game, or not this game, this part of the game to me is just really dull. Let me read more things from this book while things are going on. The most exciting thing to happen in this area is when Jill gets um, attacked by a swarm of bees. In fact, let's look them up. I guess they're wasps, actually. Wasps have full, felt the full brunt of the T-virus and have grown to enormous sizes. Alright, so that explains that really big wasp that attacked us from that painting. Oh, that's actually interesting. The stingers are filled with venom mixed with the T-virus. Yeah, that, that's actually pretty cool. I, I like that concept of... of, um... wasps that can infect you with the T-virus. That that makes a whole lot more sense. They, they could have probably done that in Resident Evil 2 instead of, uh, you know, rats being the ones that spread the T-virus. They could have just made it wasps, because that seems like a lot more sensible. And that's uh, another thing that I, I, I really do love about Resident Evil. I was talking about this before. I always love the concept of like the scientists just kind of accidentally making these creatures, or purposefully making them. And I like that a lot of them are kind of animal-based. They're not too weird and obscure. Like, Yawn is just a big snake. Lisa Trevor is just a T-virus-infected uh, woman. You know, those wasps are just wasps. The snakes are just snakes. Hunters are just, I think, mutated um, frogs, I think. Let me actually check that out. I'll check up if the hunters are spooky frogs. Which I'm pretty sure they are. The spiders... Yeah, and the spiders are just spiders. Like, I like that. It, it grounds the series. Even though it, it, you know, obviously doesn't need to be grounded. Because it's a silly series where a guy punches a boulder in one of them. Um... Alright, it doesn't say anything about the hunters. Like, their origins. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't. Um... Fertilized human egg that was infused with reptilian DNA through the T-virus. So it's a human-reptile hybrid. Which I always thought that they were just kind of frogs. Like, just mutated frogs, but... Yeah, I, that's what I like. They're just weird experiments gone wrong. Or I, I wouldn't even say that they went wrong. I'd say they went exactly how Umbrella wanted them to. This is something that I don't think anyone has ever liked in the history of video games. Block pushing puzzles. Or just block pushing in general. It always takes way too long. If I was making video games, I feel like I feel like people who play video games would probably make the best video games, and I'm not like trying to toot my own horn because I haven't the slightest clue how to make a video game. Also, I'll put a pin in that because this is one of my favorite parts of the game, and it's contained in, like I said, one of my least favorite parts of the game. This is truly scary to me. This is a fear I've had since I was a kid, and whenever you have to confront a fear like this in a video game, it's the scariest thing. Every time I'm in the ocean, I always, when I'm exiting the ocean, feel like something is coming up from behind me and is going to pull me in. So having to actually run away from something in water that is right behind you is terrifying to me. So that is cool. You know, that is a section in this game and in this series that is actually scary to me. And this part always intimidated me when I was younger because of that. And, you know, sharks are painted to be these really big, nasty creatures. So this part was always very scary to me. Although, once you get older and actually get more learned, you realize sharks really aren't that bad. Which I think is kind of interesting. That, like, the media has kind of unintentionally, because of Jaws, 
painted sharks as these bloodthirsty monsters that kill millions of Americans and humans every year, whereas really, I think there's like one or two deaths a year due to sharks. What they'll do is they'll see you, they'll, they'll maybe bite an arm or a leg, sometimes they'll bite them off, and then they'll go, oh wait, shit, this isn't what I wanted, and they'll let go. Very rarely do sharks actually, um, you know, kill, kill people. You'll get mauled by one at the probably worst. So sharks really aren't that bad. Zombie sharks, however, kill at least three people a year, which is significantly more than normal sharks. They're the real problem. They're who we should be making the movies about, Mr. Spielberg. This is why I shouldn't make videos at 2 o'clock in the morning, because I don't know what I'm saying anymore. So, this is, this is cool. Again, I, this is one of my favorite parts in the game. I like that you have to, you know, this is kind of timed, because that shark will try and get in here. And obviously we have the critical mass there. And the shark isn't, you know, helping us at all. This part is a little dumb, though. <laughs> Unfortunately, you don't ever fight the sharks, which are called Neptunes. Which is a badass name. Like, the dogs get Cerberus, and the sharks get Neptune. Like, that's so cool. This is really anticlimactic, I think. You just kind of drain the pool, and the sharks just die. It's like those those sharks didn't do anything to anyone. You know, they didn't they didn't attack us. We're just being a dick. Let's see. Developed as an experiment to prove that the T virus would combine well even with sea creatures, it's a new form of BOW created from a great white shark base. The naturally aggressive tendencies of its species has been increased, and its strength has been augmented to the extent that it no longer fears living creatures. Yep, yeah, so, there you go. <laughs> but in the end, it's still a creature of the sea, and as such has absolutely no applications for battle on land. As you can see here, they're just flopping around. I think it would have been cool, maybe not cool, but it would have been a, a, a nice little touch if you got too close to one of the Neptunes. It would just kind of chomp you up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if any of the Neptunes catch up to you, I'm pretty sure you're a goner just straight up. Yeah, this book's really good. Um, I have the first one. I don't know if it's volume one, or I don't think at the time it was a volume. But it's a little on the pricey side now. I was able to find it for pretty cheap, but it's also used. So some pages are kind of falling out, but... If you can get a hold of it, it's, like I said, Resident Evil Archives, Umbrella's Virus Uncovered, and it chronicles the years of 1960 to 1998. So, I, I really like it, and like I said, it's it's like the Hyrule Historia for Resident Evil. There's a Volume 2 as well that covers, I think, Resident Evil 4 and 5, so that's cool. There's some really interesting stuff in there about 5, like the conceptual phase of like what was supposed to be in that game. Maybe it's that book. It might it might be a different book that I'm thinking of, but there's cool stuff like how about Barry was supposed to be in that game and you were supposed to fight an army of giants. Really cool stuff in there. So we killed the shark because the shark had the key, I guess. See, look at that. That that shark didn't he didn't need anyone. He just had a key. He ate a key. Sharks are big and dumb. They don't they don't harm humans. Hashtag yes all sharks. Or to be no all sharks. Yes all humans. So, unfortunately that's one of my favorite parts of the game done. And now we go back to one of my least favorite parts of the game just because this area is dumb and I hate it. Thankfully, I think we're gonna leave like right after this. I don't think there's really anything else that we need to do in this shack. Oh, hell yeah, dude. At the end of the game, like the very, very end of the game, we're actually going to have a use for the Magnum. 
but for the like 90% of this game it's pretty useless in my opinion. I'm still just perplexed at how great this game looks. Like, obviously this is the remastered, but I think even on the GameCube this looks just beautiful. I've said this many, many times, and it bears repeating because I, I legitimately think this. Capcom has the ability to make timeless looking games. From the GameCube on, obviously there's like limits to what they can do, because like the PS1 is never going to look good. But from GameCube on, Capcom makes timeless games. All their games from the GameCube forward to today will look great 20 years from now. But anyway, that's it for this video. See you next time. Hope you have a good one.